Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Just out here, hanging out with my ponytail palms. Actually, just a couple days ago, repotted this little one right in front of me, and I realized that I've never talked about these on the channel before, which is a bit surprising. They're a really common, fun house plant. A lot of people grow them. They're readily available. And I thought well, this would be a great opportunity to jump in here and just do a little care video and talk about some of the nuances. The care on these plants, pretty simple. There's not a ton to really even say about the care. It's pretty cut and dry. I'll do the quick care up here on the screen and uh, there will just be a little bit of elaboration on it. Like I said, very easy to grow. The ponytail palm, Bucarnia, Ray Curvata, these like bright intense light, the more light you can give them, the better. Though they can go low light, uh, their growth will just be a slower need to kind of alter how you're watering them with less light. You'll get anywhere from 15 to 20 feet tall, though over 15 feet is kind of uncommon, especially in the house. I wouldn't expect them to get anywhere near as large you're growing these in the home. They have very low water needs. I'd let the top two inches of soil drought in between waterings and uh, even more so during the winter months. Fertilize with a cactus and succulent fertilizer during the growing months only and non-toxic to dogs and cats. Very pet friendly plant. I'd still keep it away from curious mouths though. And yeah, like I said, as far as the actual care is concerned for the plant, there's just not much else to say. They're very simple and easy to grow plants. The main thing to talk about with these is going to be watering, pruning and pests because those are the things I get asked about the most with the ponytail palms. I should also mention not a palm. I'll just go ahead and put it out there so I don't have people correcting me. I know not a palm tree with that lovely monopodial growth. Monopodial meaning all the growth is arising from the same point and the plant keeps on climbing up. People tend to throw the word palm like a palm tree into the name of the plant but it's not. More closely related to an agave, actually. And they actually have some pretty cool family members, the Nolinas, Nolinas, however you want to pronounce it, that make a decent houseplant as well. There's one, it's, I think the common name is just uh, the blue bear grass, has a similar appearance, which has a more narrow leaf, but a beautiful, beautiful blue foliage on them, and should make just as good of a houseplant and would probably want even less water than these are going to want. On that note, water. The majority of problems people encounter with growing ponytail palms has to do with watering. More often than not, it's usually overwatering. This codex that they have down there, that stores lots and lots of water in it. So it is very crucial that the soil you have these in drains very quickly, has nice sharp drainage. This isn't a plant where you would want to use any type of soil that holds onto moisture for very long. As a general rule of thumb, I like to have these in a potty mix that dries out within two to three days. I want it to dry out very, very quickly. I just repotted this one just uh, almost two days ago. It was in a very small pot and it, I could have left it in that pot. You can leave these in these smaller pots for many, many years and they'll be okay with it. The issue I have with the tiny pots on the ponytail palms is that it can be kind of a pain to water, which I know doesn't seem like a big deal when you only need to water the plant about once a month, if even that often, depends on where you live, your weather and those things. I generally, during the summertime, I make sure these get watered at least every two weeks, but it's pretty hot here. There's a good amount of airflow, so it dries the soil out. But when the pot only extends to the, like, just you have like a half inch to work with outside the codex, it, to me, it's just annoying watering them in that matter because you water them and it just goes everywhere. So that's why I opted to go ahead and put this in a much wider container that's shallow so it will dry quickly. By doing that it just makes the plant easier and even more low fuss than it already is. However I did do something here that I think I'm going to need to correct. You can see I have these pieces of chipped lava on top. I just did that for decorative purposes and when I did it I knew that I may have to pull that out because top dressing your soil does hold in moisture and I watered this in uh, like I said, it's been just about almost two days and you can see this ring, this dark ring here on that codex. That's where moisture is wicking up there. That's bad. During the summer, it's not something I'd worry about as much because again, it's pretty warm here. So I uh, don't really worry that much about rot happening. But during the winter time, that's going to be an issue. So as much as I love having a top dressing on there just because I think it looks more neat and tidy, I'm going to take it out because I want to make sure that the soil's drying quickly. That's the overall theme here. If you want a potting mix on a ponytail pump to dry fast. Very, very, very fast. Want the codex, that's this base here, to be nice and firm. Don't want it to be squishy. Those are all indications that the plant's being overwatered. In contrast to that, sometimes these will start to get sort of dimpled. 
that can be an indication of overwatering or underwatering. You actually need to evaluate a lot more about the plant's conditions to figure out what's causing that. Usually that would be the plant being too dry though, and it's starting to pull nutrients and water from that caudex. So that would be an indication you might want to increase watering a little bit if you're noticing that this is starting to shrivel up. As far as pests are concerned, it's pealy much your standard houseplant pests, scale, mealybugs, mites, just things you go ahead and treat with an oil or a spray, some type of soap, rinse it off very heavily, repeat as necessary. I do know mealybugs can be a bit of a pain getting down into all these little nooks and crannies, but it hasn't been a big problem for me. And you know, I've struggled with mealybugs on some of my plants, but for the most part, usually as long as I make sure that my soaps that I'm using get down inside these crevices and then I wash them out really well, it's not something I've had to contend with too terribly much. I have heard people talk about these being spider mite magnets. I've never had that issue, but I also keep mine in my garage where it's very cool and very low light during the winter, and I barely touch them. This bigger one that's over here, like I said, I really, I don't, I don't do much with this plant during the winter time. During the active growing season, I make sure it gets watered with all my other house plants, and it actually puts on a decent amount of growth, considering it's a ponytail palm, which are regarded to be slow growers, but once I have this outside and it's getting watered regularly, which is okay as long as that soil drains quickly and dries out in between waterings, I see occasional fertilizers here and there. It's and This has actually put on a decent amount of growth over the last, I'd say, three years. It's probably put on maybe over a foot of trunk there uh, probably over a foot because when i got this there wasn't a lot of growth coming out from that caudex down there there's like maybe i don't know four or five inches something like that so yeah while they are considered to be slow growers if you have the heat and you can get them outside and the soil's draining well enough to water them on a more regular occasion you'll get more growth out of them kind of true of any plant though right so this one right here is going to be okay in this pot for a few years i'd say at least three to four years, maybe even up to five, just kind of depends on the soil and how things break down. But there's a lot of inorganic material in that potty mix, a lot of stone and pumice, so it shouldn't break down too quickly. And then this one I could repot, but I just don't really see a reason to. It's doing so well as it is that, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it should get to a point where I'm having trouble keeping that plant hydrated, which is hard to imagine with a ponytail palm, but if it got there, then that's when I would know to repot it, but otherwise, it's fine for at least another year or two. Okay, and then pruning. This is the thing I get asked about the most with ponytail palms. It's always about pruning, and that's largely because they get these little brown tips on here. They don't know how well they're even going to show on camera. They get brown tips, and that bothers people, and then there are people who are newer to plants sometimes who that just kind of might freak you out a little bit and make you think you're not doing something right. The brown tips, sometimes it just happens. It can be maybe the plants in a drafty area, so the moisture is getting blown out of the foliage. If it's yellow and happening very, very suddenly, then I would look into the plant's soil moisture. Is it too wet? Is it staying wet for too long? That's not good. It doesn't like a typical houseplant where you want that consistently moist soil. I mean, when you water it, you want it to be consistent all the way around. However, I would never buy a ponytail palm from a nursery if I felt the soil and it was wet. Never. I mean, that's kind of true for any cactus or succulent in general. It's just you may have issues with rot. Normally, though, I don't think you'll even be able to see that. You can kind of see it. It's just so fine and small at the end that it's so easy for moisture to uh, transpire out of the, that tiny little point that usually that's all it is. It's not a big deal and not something to worry about. And the main question I get is, can you cut that off? You can, if you want to, you can take some clean scissors or shears, whatever you're using, and cut that tip off. It's really a matter of personal preference. Where I've made this cut here, that's going to end up leaving a little brown line right along that edge, and I personally don't think it looks that attractive, so I tend to just leave it. If it's just a little bit, like you see right here, then it's really not a big deal. That other piece just cut off was a little bit bigger. Like I said, it's kind of personal preference. It is something that just commonly comes with the territory of growing a ponytail palm. There are ways to avoid it, like making sure, like I mentioned, that there aren't any strong winds or drafts or anything like that blowing around on the plant. That's going to cause more moisture to transpire from the foliage. I was going to say, maybe consider bumping up your humidity, but I mean, they don't this is a plant that comes from the desert. They really don't need much humidity. One thing I would not suggest doing is misting the plant. That would be potentially a bad idea. Again, there are factors that can make things different for different people. Typically in the average household, I'd say no, just because if water collects 
inside these leaves up against that trunk, then that's going to make the plant very, very, very prone to having rot and uh, just different bacterial and fungal issues. So I would say avoid it if possible. And, uh, you know, there's everybody's water quality is different. You can end up having, see, there's some discoloration along the trunk on this one. I just assume that that's from it being like mass watered with other plants when it was on a table somewhere and that's probably just hard water stains or could be from some kind of insecticide too i don't really know and sometimes they do have that glaucus membrane that powdery membrane sometimes they will have that but it's not i mean i don't see it that often it's just re really risky having moisture settle on these so i would avoid misting it i would avoid getting water into the crown of that plant into the center in between these leaves really period okay and lastly pruning for height eventually It'll take a while, depending on how big your plant is when you get it, but these will usually reach a size someday, <laughs> far in the future from when you get them, where it may not be to your liking when you have it in your house. There are a plant where you can come in and just make a cut, right? Wherever that trunk is too high, you can just cut that. And it will go ahead, just like you can see over here on my larger one. You can see where this one was cut down there. It's where all these new trunks are emerging. So down there was the main growth. They cut it new growth came out the top and that's totally fine but once you make that cut down there it's never going to regrow from that point it's only going to regrow from the uh, new stalks that are coming out the sides so pick your cutting point wisely decide where it is you want to start having branches coming up and that's where you would make that cut and i would only do that in the spring or summer winter time i probably wouldn't during the winter months these really don't need much. You can cut back on watering. For, I mean, geez, up to as much as like six weeks. Some people will go even longer than that. I generally think once a month, at least giving the plant a splash of water is a good idea. Unless, you know, maybe you have a room that's kind of chilly or really humid. There are always factors that can make it different, but generally I'd say once a month to every six weeks during the winter time. The main thing is that it's best for the soil to dry out in between waterings, especially during the winter months when there's less light and they're not in active growth. And then during the spring and summer, especially if you have it outside, you could water it up to every two weeks or even every three weeks or once a month. You're going to have to kind of find your own balance there. The main thing is just to make sure that at least the top, a lot of people say inch, I think two inches just to be safe, two inches of soil, you want that to dry out. Which is another reason I kind of like a shallow planter for these, which can be problematic when they get bigger because these actually do take up a very wide space. So someday when the plant's bigger, having them in a wide shallow container like this may not be practical because that would just take up a huge amount of floor space. But when it's not in something that's really deep, like a regular planter, I don't really have to worry about the bottom being uh, moist and the top being dry. That can still happen here, but it's not as likely. Things will should be more homogenous. Don't get it twisted. I'm not saying you need to put your ponytail palm in a shallow container. That was purely aesthetics and then me just being lazy and not wanting to have to water it slowly. The like once a month when I water it, I just wanna go ahead and pour the water on there and walk away from it. I don't wanna have to stand there and give it a tiny sip and wait for it to soak in and a tiny sip and wait for it to soak in because there's only a tiny gap to get the water in. Nah, I, there's, I have a lot of other plants to take care of, so that's, no, I don't have time for all that. You know what I mean, I have time for it, I just don't feel like messing with it, and since it needed to be repotted, I thought, well, I'll go ahead and do it the way I like it. And avoid fertilizing plants that have just been freshly repotted, like this one right here. One, the time of year, I wouldn't fertilize it right now anyways. However, since I've just repotted it, I'd probably wait at least a month maybe three weeks to do its first fertilizing just because the roots are more exposed. The soil is more likely to hold on to the fertilizer and potentially burn those roots just because everything's so fresh and hasn't settled in. The roots haven't spread throughout yet. Then the last thing I did mention, you can grow them in lower light conditions. They're sturdy, tough plants. They can take it. Make sure that the watering is very infrequent. The less light, the less water. That's very important. Is that, you know, if the plant's not in active growth, it's not going to be drinking all that water. It's not gonna be taking that in and then it'll just sit in there and it'll just, you know, it'll rot and die. Ideally though, I would make sure these get at least medium light. They can and will do a little bit better in bright intense light. Okay, I think that's everything. Comment down below. It's impossible to remember everything with a plant video. So tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. What have some of your experiences been growing the ponytail palms? I, I'm overall, I think that they're just absolutely lovely plants. I love the shape. I like the texture. There's just something fun and unique about them with the way they get that big stump on them, that codex and the monopodial growth. Pretty green foliage and its gracefulness. There's just so much to love about them. Really excellent plants. For a lot of people, it depends on where you live, but they're generally pretty readily available and not terribly expensive most of the time either. If you get into a larger 
ponytail palm, then uh, that's going to cost you more. This, I got a deal on this. It was like, I think it was $44.99 from a big box store. And uh, like I said, it's grown a lot, but I think I've had it for three, maybe four years. I'm not positive, but most of this growth on here is new within that time. And I think that that's just because when I have it outside, it gets lots of rain and it gets splashed with fertilizer and it does okay. We have a nice hot climate where kind of able to get away with that. The water's not building up down there in the soil and drowning it out. It's in a very well-drained mix. Who out there has inherited one of these? I always love hearing those stories with these plants that are very long-lived, how long you've had them or who it's been passed along from and how old they've gotten. And it's always fun having plants around that have that capability to be passed around generation to generation and just do well and get to be a part of everyone's stories. That's a lot of fun. These things have been a lot of fun to try and film through. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.